Good morning and happy Sabbath to each one of you who are here. As I look out over our church, it's very obvious that there is some type of activity going on at the academy. I think it's a camp out for the junior and seniors, which gives the freshmen and, so and sophomores opportunity to um, go home or maybe somewhere else. But we're missing them, but we're glad that you are here today. It's my privilege to be able to um, have an announcement or two this morning. And the first one, this is just a reminder, right, for the deaconesses, right? There is a meeting planned for tomorrow evening. 6 p.m. right in the fellowship hall. I believe you've either been communicated with by email and has been announced for or in the bulletin a week or two, but right, we would appreciate your attendance at that meeting. When I was asked to be a part of the announcement team for on occasion, this came at a perfect weekend because I think I'm going to take this opportunity or at least make this an opportunity for a little project that um, some church members and myself have been involved in. And we need a little bit of help. And since I'm up front here, it was a perfect weekend just to right, share with you a thing or two. Some church members, right, along with my wife and I, have been involved with helping a community family. And we have come to a place where we would like a little assistance, if you would so choose. I'd be glad to give you more detail if you want to see me afterwards. But in this case, this particular family has been without transportation for about a month now. And so we are involved in helping to provide some transportation for this family. And as things have worked out and we put a plan together, it would make things easy on several of us if we could get about $500 in additional help to make transportation possible for this family. So if you have a um, burden that you would like to help out, I'd be glad to talk with you afterwards. And we don't need a lot at this point, right? This will become a reality for the family, but I'm just giving the opportunity for some of you to participate. I'm giving you the opportunity to participate if you would um, like to do that. And I think, you know, right, we could do that. Um, Mark Beardsley also has an, a Pathfinder announcement. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my announcement this morning has to do partially with this insert that you see in your bulletin. Um, the, everybody's aware of Hurricane Irma and Harvey that are going on and have gone on and the needs that are going to be there for that. And the Adventist Disaster and Community Services are going to be trying to help with that. Well, we can be a part of that helping as well. And we are going to have a box that we will put, not today, but it will be in the back of the church for some of the disaster relief supplies that are needed. We're gonna make some personal care kits. You can see some of the pictures here with some of the items that are needed. Um, if you look on this insert in your bulletin, it also gives you the website where you can find this list. So you can look that up at a later time if you would like as well. But bring your items if you can and leave them in the box. If you wanna make a full kit and put it in a Ziploc bag, a large bag, you can do that or if you're able to just bring parts of the kits, that would be great as well. So I just wanted to let you guys know that we're gonna be trying to help with that and you guys can assist as well. Thank you so much.
in your house this morning. Father, we're thankful, Lord, that we can be here going through a, a week of trials, a week of busyness, that we can rest with thee. Father, there's so much going on in this world today. There are people who are suffering. There are things that are going to take place. When we think of Florida, Houston, Father, we pray for these individuals. Father, we know that many of them don't even have a place to worship today. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would be with them. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that we can continue to pray for these individuals. So, Father, we just ask for your presence right now. We pray, Lord, that the holy angels is here with us also, that we can sing praises and honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to embark on a little bit of an adventure for our first song. It's number 380 in the hymnal. For those of you that read music, we'd love to have you open those hymnals up and follow along. He's playing the song through so that you hear the tune. Welcome day of sweet repose. Let us not take these sacred hours for granted. be number 426, much more familiar to all of you, I'm sure. I shall see the king, number 426.
to living in a land where there's no floods, no fires, no earthquakes, no death, no sorrow, no crying, seeing our King face to face. Our next song is gonna be number 422. Please stand with me. Let's sing it like we mean it. Marching to Zion, number 422. Good morning. I have your special um, personal ministries talk today. I'd like to tell you about something that happened um, a couple weeks ago. I'm going to read it because when I stand up here and see all of you looking at me, my mind is wiped clean. So. Teddy is an old friend of my husband's, and he sometimes shops at the store where I work. He might come in three or four times a year that I know of. One day a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> when my husband came to pick me up from work, Teddy was shopping at the store. We walked out together, and Ronnie and Teddy took a little time to catch up while I went to the store next door for a couple of things. And when I got back up, um, out, Teddy was telling about what he'd been up to lately. 
He told us that his mother had come from the U.S. to the U.S. from Germany, and they spoke quite a bit of German at home, and although Teddy didn't speak it, he could understand most of it. But sometimes when his mother and her sister were speaking about more private matters, they spoke quietly in a language that Teddy didn't understand, but he gave it no thought because it had always been that way at his house. Teddy's mother died before her sister, and shortly before she passed away, his aunt told him a secret that his mother had never told him. She didn't want him to know. And that secret was that Teddy's mother's family was Jewish. She had thought that if Teddy never knew why he was a Jew, in the event of another Holocaust, he would be protected from it. Now things began to click for him. The language that the two ladies spoke in private was Hebrew. He began to research what it meant to be a Jew, how they related to the Bible and to Christianity. Being raised German, Teddy was raised in the Lutheran Church, and he loved it, and he loved Jesus. But now he began to identify as a Jew, and he felt strong, a strong need to be able to share with them what Jesus means to him and how they can retain their identity and still accept Jesus as their savior. So Teddy studied to be a rabbi. He studied under rabbis from Jerusalem. He finished his studies, and he is now an honest to goodness, legitimate Jewish rabbi. All the time that Teddy was studying, his goal was to go to missionary, uh, Israel to be a missionary to the Jews to show Jesus to them. That is all he wanted to do. But his Lutheran pastor sat him down and talked to him about where he lives and the statistics of churchgoers here. In an area that includes Sand Lake and Howard City in the north area of Grand Rapids, there are a lot of people, thousands. And he told us how many approximately, and I didn't remember. I don't remember numbers. But only about 11%, more or less, I can't remember that number either, but it was pretty low. Of all those people attend church, ever. So Teddy has decided to stay in this area and be a missionary for Christ here. In his studies, Teddy learned about the Bible Sabbath, and he learned to love it. Teddy keeps the Sabbath. And he also goes to church every Sunday at his Lutheran church because he loves the church that he was raised in. He is the resident rabbi for his church. When the pastor needs a little help in understanding a passage from the Bible while preparing for his sermon, he asks Teddy for Teddy's help because he can read and understand the language of the Bible. But Teddy is a missionary. He talks to everyone who will listen about Jesus, making sure that they know that Jesus loves them and that he died for them and that he's coming back soon and we all need to be ready. He told us all of this that day in the parking lot at Rogers Natural Foods. But what he said and did next blew me away. He said that everywhere he goes, he leaves a little tract with everyone who will take them. And he reached into his pocket and he pulled out, you guessed it, glow tracks. Where does he get them? I don't know. I was too shocked to ask. But my thoughts went immediately to something that I've heard before, that if we don't do our part in the work that Christ has asked us to do, that someone else will take up our work. Jesus asks us all to go and share what we have with others. Are we doing our part? Or are we letting somebody like Teddy do our work for us? And where will that leave us when Jesus comes? God is amazing, isn't he? How, how he works. He's a very generous God, too. Do you know, he, uh, some people think of the Sabbath as, some, as a time that God takes away from us. Nothing could be farther from the truth. It's a gift from God, and it celebrates the goodness of God and his generosity. I was reading recently in the book of uh, Philippians. Uh, I'm in chapter 4 right now uh, reading. 
Paul was in need. I don't think he went through a hurricane. I think he was in prison. But he had needs. And uh, he, said, he said in verse 15, Now you Philippians know also that to the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. And uh, then down in verse 18, it says, Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Aphroditus the things sent from you. So he got a care package, didn't he? So you, Pathfinders are doing a good thing here, and I think we ought to help them with those care packages, because that's what the Philippians did for, for Paul. And uh, then Paul said, uh, uh, the things sent from you were a sweet-smelling aroma and an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And then the next verse, this is very, one of my favorite verses, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And he gives us opportunity to be like him. And this is why we have offerings on Sabbath morning. It's an opportunity to share uh, that blessing with God. I mean, God is blessed by our offerings. And uh, we can be blessed too. The offering that's taken today goes for the world budget. So shall we bow our heads? Father in heaven, we are amazed at what a great God you are. We just pray your blessing on the offerings that's received. May they uh, show your love to the world. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, another one of our favorite times in the, in the worship service, right? Children's story. So, boys and girls, uh, Steve Rogers has a story for you this morning, I believe.
Make sure you get a basket. Good morning to you all. How are you? Great. I have a story today that happened in one of my favorite stores. Do you know what one of my favorite stores is? Guess? What? Close. Home Depot. Somebody said it. Yes. There's a lot of cool tools in there and fix-it stuff. And my wife is, she has a lot of good characteristics, and one of them is she likes to go to that store too. And she's not wound too tight. So when we go to that store, <laughs> that didn't sound, not at all like I wanted it to sound, but <laughs> what I meant was that she's very flexible in having fun. Is that, you get that? So we're, when we were at Home Depot and, and they're getting wore out because I'm spending too much time. She would take Josie, who was probably about y'all's age, and they would go over to the tubs, okay? And they would lay in the tubs, and they would pull out these wands and stuff and talk back and forth like they're in space shuttles flying around, okay? So you know what I'm saying now. She's real cool about that stuff. 
So anyway, we get done and we're checking out. Do you guys know what self-scanners are? Yeah, those were brand new. I mean, brand new, they had just come out. And I hate technology. Don't like it at all, and I did not want to use that. But you know what they did? They shut down all the lanes with human beings in them. And so you had to use it. The only thing open was the service desk, and there was like a really long line because everyone was intimidated, just like me, and didn't want to use it. But I thought, I'll go use it anyway. And I go up there, and I look at it, and it's kind of self-explanatory, right? I mean, you guys can do it, right? Yeah. I was struggling. So I would pick something up, and I know now, I didn't know then. When you run through, what does it do? And what sound does it make? Beep, that's right. Didn't know this. I should have known this, but I, I don't know what I was doing. Anyway, I'm just running the stuff through there, bagging it. And the lady comes over to me, and she says, sir, none of this stuff is adding up on your screen. Are you trying to steal this? And now, I was hot. Whoop. I have a lot more patience now than I did then. And she was questioning my integrity. And I, I think a cork went off. And then I said, are you kidding me? You lock all these things down, and you force us to use this, and then you're going to come over and question my integrity? What a joke. And I grab all my stuff. I said, I'll go wait in the line with all these other people. And I put it in my cart, and I walk away. And I'm steaming, and I'm giving her the stink eye when I can. You guys know what stink eye is? Does your mom give you the stink eye? Maybe like if you're doing something wrong, and they had that look, and you stopped. Do you know what I mean? OK. So I'm giving her a little stink eye, and sitting, in, and then I, I can't believe this lady. And I look down. And what do you suppose my shirt says? It says, God's team. And then all of a sudden I go, hmm. Uh, I'm not acting like I'm on God's team. And then I feel about this tall. And then I start this analyzing about, OK, I reacted emotionally, and I shouldn't have done that, and I owe her an apology. And the other side of my brain is like, Tough luck. She's mean. I don't want to apologize. And my wife is with me, and she's very smart. My wife doesn't poke me because she knows I'll dig in. So she just lets me process. No stink eye from my wife. Just So I'm processing, and I go through this line, and everything's wonderful, and I say, I need to apologize to this lady because I wasn't nice to her. So I walk over there. And she sees me coming, and she gets really busy. She loses eye contact, and she's working on something over here. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I've really done the wrong thing here. So anyway, I said, ma'am, and she turns around, and she's a little frightened because I probably wasn't too nice. And I said, I'm really sorry. I just reacted emotionally, and you didn't do anything wrong. And I'm sorry about that. And I could tell, she said, OK, fine. But I could tell she didn't receive that at all. You know, I had a chance to do the right thing, and I blew it. And uh, I want to warn you, don't just react and let your emotions jump out. Think a little bit. And think about whose team you want to be on, okay? All right, thank you. You're very conditioned, children. You may go back now. <laughs> Wonderful. Time we get to talk to the king of the universe this morning as a family. So, shall we kneel?
our Lord God, creator of the universe. We are so thankful for this opportunity you gave us this Sabbath morning to come to you in prayer. There's so many needs. I know I can't think of all of them. There's people in need all over the world from earthquakes and hurricanes and floods. We uh, know that you love each one of these. Uh, we pray that somehow we might know what part you want us to play in, uh, in uh, helping those people, not only to recover from their losses, but to know you. We, we uh, do think of uh, Beulah Hendricks this morning. Pray that you would be with her and her family. We are also thinking of the House family. Pray that you would give them the comfort that you want to give them. And, uh, help us all to keep our eyes fixed on you and your, your uh, goals and your plans for this world uh, so that we don't get discouraged along the way. Uh, many of us have needs that are private, and uh, we're going to be quiet for just a few moments while these are brought to you. And Lord, one of our greatest needs this morning is to know you more, and uh, so we pray your blessing on Pastor as he brings us message from your word help us to understand and uh, see your love in this message and uh, throughout the week that we might find opportunity to share your love with others we just thank you for hearing our prayer this morning in jesus name we pray amen Our scripture today is one I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It is found in 1 John 1, 9. Please follow along in your Bibles or from memory. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May we remember and be blessed. just want to tell you this morning that our brother Clayton Brower had agreed to accompany me in this piece and uh, he texted me this morning and said his mother had fallen and he wasn't going to be able to come and I said I would bring that to the attention of our church and ask you to pray for him and his mom. I don't know if she was injured a little bit or any at all or had to go to the hospital or anything but Got that text from him. Anyway, I thank Arlene for playing for me, and we're going to play a song together now. Mm -hmm. 